Blender 4.4 is finally here, and it has been laser focused on refining what already works. This release is packed with updates designed to enhance your workflow and address a ton of reported issues. In fact, more than 500 bugs were fixed in January 2025 alone, thanks to the Winter of Quality initiative. This means whether you are animating a short film or building a game level, you can expect a more reliable and smoother experience. Before we continue, if you are a beginner 3D artist, or if you have been doing 3D art for a while now, and you don't know how to monetize your 3D skills, you are not alone. Because as a 3D artist myself, I have struggled with this for a long time. That's why I'm happy to announce that we created a class outlining some of the best ways to monetize your 3D skills. In this class, I'm gonna share with you 5 methods that will help you make a living from your 3D art, at least the foundation of it. The class is now on Skillshare, and I will appreciate it a ton if you want to check it out. We will go through some obvious but overlooked stuff, and of course some common practices. And whether you are a beginner or a seasoned 3D artist, I'm sure you will find useful things. Please check out the class and help support the channel. Also the first 100 people to sign up using our code will get a month-long free subscription of Skillshare. Let's start with the splash screen. Although the design hasn't changed, it now prominently features Flow, the Blender movie that has earned an Oscar and a Golden Globe. But this isn't just for show. It is a subtle nod to Blender's creative heritage and the amazing possibilities that lie within the software. With its fully customizable design, you can adjust the splash screen to reflect your own creative style or showcase your projects. One of the most notable changes I mean in this release is how Blender handles animation data. The action data blocks have been revamped with the introduction of slots. But what does that mean? In previous versions, if you had an object that moved and changed color simultaneously, you had to manage those changes separately. But now, a single action can hold multiple types of animation data, with each slot handling a different aspect, be it movement, material changes, or even more complex setups. This update is a key part of ongoing Animation 2025 project which aims to modernize character rigging and animation tools inside Blender. It also introduces a new Python API as well. And while it's not fully backwards compatible, don't worry. Your old Blend files will update automatically when you import them. Now, if you've been hoping for a faster and more responsive viewport rendering, Blender 4.4 has delivered a big update with its experimental Vulkan backend. Introduced in Blender 4.1 and now significantly improved, Vulkan offers a performance boost that you will notice right away. Now we're gonna talk about compositing. The CPU compositor in Blender 4.4 has been completely rewritten. Keynotes such as Blur, Filter, and Mask are now running between 2 and 10 times faster, making it a real difference when you are tweaking your images. This isn't just a speed boost, it lays the groundwork for future improvements in the compositor. One of the most noticeable updates is the revamped glare node. So if you've ever struggled with creating realistic lens flares in addition to glows in your renders, you will appreciate the extra control in this node and the stuff it now offers. You can fine tune the mix, saturation, and the tint settings to match your scene's lighting more precisely. The node also provides multiple outputs, so you can isolate the glare effect or just extract the highlights for additional tweaking in the post-production. And while these changes might not turn your project into an instant masterpiece, they sure make the process a lot smoother. For studios and professionals, consistency across tools in a production pipeline is critical. Blender 4.4 has been updated to comply with CY 2025 specification, I mean for the VFX reference platform. This means that key libraries like OpenColor.io, OpenXR, and OpenVDB are now aligned with industry standards. The CY 2025 specification, overseen by the Visual Effects Society, ensures that everyone in the pipeline is using the same versions of essential software libraries, which leads to fewer compatibility issues and a smoother collaboration on large projects. Interestingly enough, the Blender Foundation had once considered moving away from the VFX reference platform, but they reversed that decision in 2022, and full compliance was restored with Blender 4.0. With Blender 4.4, you will get an extra layer of reliability, knowing that your tools work well with industry standard pipelines. And I personally think this is a step forward in the right direction for Blender to become a more industry standard software. 
While many of these updates add new capabilities, a significant portion of Blender 4.4 is dedicated to fixing bugs. Over 500 reported issues were squashed in January 2025 alone. These fixes touch almost every aspect of the software, from the grease pencil and user interface to the viewport and geometry nodes framework, each receiving dozens of fixes. And if you've been ever frustrated by quirky bugs that interrupt your work, you will appreciate the focus on stability and reliability in this release. It is like getting a software tuned up which makes everything run just a bit more smoothly. And for those who rely heavily on cycles for rendering, the update to the optic denoiser is a welcomed improvement. This update offers more consistent denoising performance even for users with older GPU drivers. In practice, when you zoom in on your renders, you will notice fewer artifacts and more accurate color reproduction. The subtle yet significant enhancement ensures that high detail projects come out looking as clean and as precise as possible, helping you maintain the visual quality of your work. Also, the user interface in this release gets its fair share of thoughtful updates. Fonts, tooltips, and common panels have been all fine-tuned for better clarity. And the status bar now displays warnings for common issues, like when your objects have negative scale values, and so on. These may seem like small adjustments, but they contribute to a more intuitive and less frustrating experience overall. And for those into 3D modeling, there are some improvements for managing topology too. You can now select three and five pole vertices with more ease. And the process of joining tris or quads have been adjusted to favor an even quad grid. And while these enhancements might fly under your radar, they really help making modeling tasks more predictable and enjoyable, particularly when working on complex projects. Sculpting in Blender 4.4 also benefits from some solid improvements. The previous flatten, fill, and scrape brushes have been merged into a new plane brush, which streamlines the sculpting process and makes achieving consistent results much easier. Whether you are detailing a character's face or adjusting a landscape texture, I think these refinements can help keep your workflow natural and uninterrupted. In addition to this, fans of procedural workflows will find plenty of things to appreciate in this release. The Geometry Nodes framework has been updated with new collection and object input nodes, making it simpler to set up and manage complex node networks. In the realm of character rigging, now there is an update, bone collection is mirrored when you apply symmetry to an armature. And if you need 2D animation or storyboarding, the Grease Pencil tool has been refined to restore features that were removed during major overhauls in Blender 4.3. This means a more familiar, user-friendly experience if you work on 2D sequences or animated sketches. Meanwhile, the video sequencer has seen workflow improvements, especially for text stripes. Now it supports the industry standard H.265 HEVC video codec. It is also capable of handling 10 and 12 bit per channel video formats. And videos rendered from Blender now use BT709 color space, which is the standard for HDTV. These changes collectively boost the reliability and professional standards of video editing with thin Blender. And by the way, the 3D viewport gets some behind the scenes upgrades too. When working in smaller interface sections, for example with a split timeline, the scroll bar now disappears automatically, cutting down on visual clutter and giving you more room to focus on your work. There is also an improved option to lock the viewport rotation, which is extremely helpful when you need a steady view of detailed modeling or setting up a shot. On top of that, the asset browser now organizes your assets in a hierarchical structure rather than a basic alphabetic list. This makes it easier to sift through large collections of models, textures, and other resources, saving you both time and frustration when searching for that perfect asset. Even though Blender 4.4 was primarily about refining what's already there, it's also laying the groundwork for future releases. You see, the emphasis on stability, performance, and streamlined workflows in this update creates a solid foundation for Blender 4.5, the upcoming long-term support release. And while you might not see a host of dramatic new features overnight, you're getting a more dependable and more steady software when it comes to updates and features every now and then, which helps you as a creative work on your personal and professional projects. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.